job was hard, mine is harder, because now I have to go last. Uh, I thought it was actually fascinating to hear from uh, Mr. Krishna first of the very technical and specific issues around our own state and our ecosystem. Then to get that kind of uh, expanded to the global perspective on wind and renewable energy by uh, your uh, council's chairman. And then to have from uh, the Trade Commissioner a, a kind of fiscal and policy perspective, but again at a continental, at a country level. So maybe I get to take it back down to the kind of state level uh, as a subset of what the Commissioner has just uh, talked about. Our Prime Minister has set a goal that we should be a renewable energy country by 2070. Now, um, you know, though we come from different political philosophies, we respect the office of the Prime Minister. Uh, we welcome his statement. We wish it was a bit more concrete because if you set a kind of broad goal that's, you know, 50 years in the future, it's very hard to track progress without concrete milestones along the way. In the case of Tamil Nadu, um, you know, realistically, if India is going to be energy neutral or carbon neutral by 2070, then we have to get there by 2050 for multiple reasons. One, because uh, we are one of the largest, most developed states in the country and we need to, I mean, if we look at other measures, we're so far ahead of the average that we'd have to get there faster for the map to work for India to get there. Two, also because I think currently we are a um, leader in the country in terms of the percentage of renewable energy. Now, part of that is the good fortune of being in the right place at the right uh, kind of uh, transition away from fossil fuel to uh, renewables. But as again was pointed out by Mr. Krishnan, we've been doing this a while, I think, in the wind energy onshore when Tamil Nadu was a pioneer. And that gave us a leg up and solar has also been good to us We're in the right place. So you add those together and I think we're somewhere north of 35% right now. At a philosophical level, uh, we have two kind of problems with the current renewable energy framework in that our demand varies somewhat seasonally but mostly during the day based on industry versus domestic consumption and so forth. Whereas our supply varies uh, partly because the time of day, partly because the time of year, because the wind uh, patterns change quite a lot, uh, at least on onshore wind. So our ambition is to eventually get to a place where we get the bulk of our energy from renewables and we hedge ourselves for fluctuating demand, I think, with close to the coast where we can ship in um, LNG if we needed to and have some kind of gas plants as the backup because it takes too long to fire up and cool down, you know, other types of plants like coal and not as clean as well. So um, we're making slow progress towards this. Uh, we should be accelerating. I think conferences like these, partnerships like these um, help us get there. As was mentioned earlier, we have a good ecosystem in multiple ways. We have a strong manufacturing base. We have existing uh, wind companies, wind turbine companies, tower companies. We have um, a natural kind of uh, requirement, right? We are not only one of the largest states, we are one of the more densely populated states. So, you know, there's a shortage of land and we're always happier to do things offshore than onshore. From the main kind of role that I play from the financial perspective of the state, I would say we're rapidly repairing uh, several years of decline and I've just concluded the supplementary budget session yesterday where we have shown that despite having the second wave of COVID, the third wave of COVID, some extreme rain plus fulfilling a whole bunch of campaign promises, we have brought the fiscal deficit down from 4.61% of um, GSDP in 2021 down to 3.38. I dare say an unprecedented reduction during COVID times. So uh, we are well on our way to becoming kind of revenue neutral and therefore much more accelerated capital spending. 
I keep making the point that we are not really capable of spending or accelerating spending uh, in conventional ways more than, you know, there's a natural ceiling. We cannot lay roads faster than 20 or 30 percent year over year or uh, lay pipes. Really, we need to think of other ways to do uh, fiscal um, investment stimulus. And I think renewable energy and other way, other kind of innovative ways that we can deploy capital would be um, a good fit both ways. It would help accelerate the deployment and it would be a good use of our resources um, as a developing economy. I think in particular for um, high technology, relatively innovative projects like offshore wind, uh, we are very, very keen on PPP models where the state has a role to play, has the financing to, to uh, contribute as an equity player or as a kind of, uh, you know, senior debt or mezzanine investor. And we take the expertise and the, um, the skill sets and the experience that uh, private players can bring. So for all those reasons, I think it's a very opportune time that uh, this event is taking place, that uh, the High Commissioner, Deputy High Commissioner is hosting today and the senior officer from London has come down from the Union government. We are of course a bit um, hamstrung by the speed at which regulation and policy is set in Delhi because this is something that is regulated by the Union government, uh, not directly by us. But my guess is that once they open the gates, uh, we will accelerate faster than most. Um, and we hope they'll open the gates soon. You know, the, the horses are getting a bit restive in, in the box, shall I say. Um, with that, you know, uh, let me, on behalf of the Chief Minister, the Governor of Tamil Nadu, welcome you all uh, to Chennai for this event, uh, for future investments, for partnerships. We look forward to working with you and uh, together achieving rapid progress in making the world a better place and uh, our energy much cleaner. Thank you.